uh, what I do is a rather special type of AI that is AI that can learn from people. So it's based on machine learning. And the first question I want to discuss is why you need such an AI in games? Why you need machine learning? And the simple answer is in most cases you don't need it. And the majority of game developers are completely happy with the handcrafted AI that they use in, on a daily basis. But sometimes you really uh, have this uh, use case for such an AI. And uh, recently I was uh, asked by my friends from Helio 9 Games to design such an AI for their uh, mobile game of uh, lawn tennis, which is called uh, World of Tennis Roaring Twenties, as you can see. This game is already released uh, last, it is spring, late spring in May, and it's uh, been it's doing, well, not so bad now. We have more than 100,000 downloads on Android platform and comparable numbers on Windows Mobile and on iPhone, iPads. Uh, and the question is why they wanted to have machine learning here. And uh, there are several answers to that. So what is special about uh, game of tennis? So first, uh, in every tennis match, you have two opponents. So one is obviously you. And who is another opponent? It should be either another person or it should be I. But the trouble is that you cannot really have a multiplayer easily in tennis because this game is very fast. And uh, if you want to play with other people around you, it means that the internet connection also should be very fast, no lags. And uh, this requirement makes it very difficult to organize um, multiplayer games because people play mobile games while they commute to work, uh, they play under you know, bad uh, conditions, and also if you narrow down uh, the opponents only to those who have comparable skills with you, then, of course, you always have very few people online ready to participate and play, especially in the early stage of games when your total user base is small. And the second trouble is even worse because uh, what we learn the hard way, people pay, lose it. And uh, the thing is, if you have a game, one versus one, it means that half of the games are lost by your customers. And they are not happy. So uh, our mm, experiments show that uh, on average, a person wants to win at least two games out of three. That's a typical value. And uh, you can't, just, can't make it with a uh, multiplayer. So that's why it's better to play against the AI who never complains. And yes, we indeed received a lot of complaints from real people who are unhappy that they lost. They say that, well, the game is bad, the controller is bad, and also maybe you are deliberately making it difficult so we have to buy optional equipment so then we can win. And so that's the worst. And you don't know what to answer that. You have to say, well, you're poor at tennis. Uh, so, uh, but what's the trouble with AI? If you handcraft it, how many different characters can you make? One, five, 10, 15, 20, that's it. So the only robust way to build a uh, hundreds, thousands of opponents is to rely on machine learning. And that's exactly what we do. So uh, now uh, let me just show you quickly what is this game about and how it looks like. So in a nutshell, the gameplay is very simple. So uh, you hit the ball with swipe, and then if you want to take the position on the on, on side of the court, you just tap there. And also, you don't need to run to intercept the ball because it's automated. So basically, you swipe, then you recover, so you take the position on the court, and when your opponent uh, shoots the ball towards you, now this movement is automated. So you only have to wait till the good moment for a swipe, and then you swipe. That's how it works. So what we do now is we uh, simply learn from existing People. So first we just had our, ourselves, developers, who played some games against very simple, dumb AI who was kind of handcrafted. And then we gathered at least five different profiles. And then we used these five, five profiles to bootstrap our game. Then there were more people and more people and more people playing who play against each other. And then thus we get more and more behavior profiles. And uh, in general, uh, this uh, method, the approach is very 
how to say usual. So what we have is uh, we have a learning stage where we show uh, to the AI the situation and the action were uh, made by a person, a real person in the game. So similar to any other machine learning task, say how do you uh, distinguish kittens from puppies? You show hundreds of pictures of kittens, labeled kittens, then you show hundreds of pictures of puppies, like puppet puppies, and then you show some random pictures, say, who is that? And the computer has to answer, okay, that's a kitten. So here it's the same. So we show it, okay, in that situation, somebody did that, in that situation, that, and that, that. And then uh, finally, when the computer has to act, it says, okay, so what should you do in that case? And the computer has to repeat that. And now what we uh, really, uh, what I want to emphasize, and what's the real topic the real message of my today's talk is, uh, to my observations, 99% of scientific papers are focused on the, on the algorithm. So if you read about Bayesian classifiers, uh, support vector machines, deep learning, anything, they all presume that you have some input data, then you have to improve the algorithm, and you get a better result. But this can, is applies only to static uh, situations like kittens and puppies. But once you get a dynamic world, like tennis, so you have a continuous flow of certain uh, situations, and then you have to learn from that uh, flow, and then you have to act also in that flow, then the question of input data also becomes crucial. And I don't know why, People very rarely talk about that, and I think that's a real issue, especially if we discuss AI in, uh, like in a general sense that has to operate on a real world, like in robots, let's say. So uh, in our case, I don't really know when I should learn actions, and I don't really know when I should act. So let me illustrate this concept. So look, that's one of the games uh, snapshots. Yes, let's start. So they do it. Now you see here, I know that the person, the bottom person tapped the screen. So I know that the bottom, bottom player really now wants to make the action. But what's the corresponding situation? To which situation this player responded to? How do I know? I just don't, I know that now he or she is tapping. That's it. Same here. Mm -hmm. So let's continue. Now I know that this person is now trying to move to the center to occupy the strategic point on the court. But how do I know to which exactly situation on the screen the person was responding to? So that's, that's a real issue. And uh, you may say that, well, you know from psychology that there is a certain delay between uh, your perception and your response, but it doesn't help because uh, the game, uh, at least this game, does not really enforce you to behave as quickly as you can. No, it's the opposite. So you decide that, okay, I'm going to make a shoot, say, to the left corner of this court. Now I have to wait till the ball approaches me, and now at the right time I have to swipe. So there is a delay between your decision made in your brain and your reaction, and it has absolutely no uh, psychological grounds. It's uh, dictated by the rules of the game. So, uh, again, if we uh, go back to this uh, scheme, that you see that everything is correct here, except that uh, I need uh, to learn action in a certain game state, but I'm, I have no idea when this game state actually occurred, and it's even worse in the acting procedure because uh, a person basically can tap screen anytime in the game. But it doesn't mean that the person does it all the time. You are tapping the screen only in certain cases when you want to do it. The question is when the AI should do this action and when it should just be idle and do nothing. That's another issue. So, solution? No solution. So that's exactly the point. So uh, I don't understand how this problem should be solved in a general case. And it's one of the issues why uh, machine learning AI is not, I think, yet won in the field of computer games and real-time systems. 
So what I can only tell you what we do in tennis. In tennis, we simply do uh, manual analysis. So uh, we have, uh, I can just show you our reasoning. So we have four different phases that we identified ourselves. It's serving, it's uh, recovery, so that's a move after shot. It's the uh, return a serve, so when you uh, hit the ball or prepare, you just wait till the opponent serves the ball. And then we handle these four cases separately and independently. So for example, just again to give you a precise, uh, concrete example, what we do in a recovery phase. What is a recovery phase? It's, uh, once again, it's a phase when you hit the ball, that's the beginning of recovery. And what you do during recovery, you can move uh, anywhere in the court just to, to occupy the strategic point. What most tennis players do, they usually go somewhere, maybe to this location, to the middle of the court, because that maximizes your chances to, uh, to, to receive, to hit the ball back. And once your opponent hits the ball to you, then that's the end of recovery phase, because then you have no uh, wheel. Now you just have to follow the ball and try to, to hit it. So what we do in this phase? First, we wait till this phase ends, and we collect what the person is tapping on the screen, how they move. And then we keep only the last movement, because we know that before that, the person is thinking, okay, I go there, no, no, I go there, no, no, I go here. Okay, and that the last movement was the real intention. So we only keep it and discard the previous. And then we match this last action with the first frame from recovery phase, because we believe that that's the situation when a person already has enough information to react. So you see, they are somehow separated in time. And what we do in acting phase, that's the same. So when uh, the first phase, uh, the first frame of the recovery phase appears on the screen, so once we hit the ball, that's recovery, and then we ask AI, what am I going to do? And then AI tells us, okay, you have to move to that location. And then the character moves to that location and does nothing till the end of the phase. Which is certain simplification, because uh, a person, a human player, can run in circles, for example. But our AI never does that, because we thought there is no sense from uh, purely a tennis perspective to do that, to implement this. But we could. So, uh, let me recap. Uh, in uh, <coughs> learning mode, we have to identify the actions. Then we have to identify the state that triggers, most likely triggers that last action. Then we learn it when it's known. And in acting mode, we identify points where it needs to take uh, the next decision. And it all has no relation to the algorithm itself, to machine learning itself. That's all preliminary analysis. So I don't even talk today how it works. And I can say that as a, uh, it's because, yes, the talk was called anticipation and awareness. And I can say that what's good about this uh, method, it uh, shows sort of anticipation of uh, opponent's actions because our AI actually reacts faster than those because maybe you react later, you just think, okay, where should I go? And then you go somewhere. But our AI actually rewinds it back and uh, acts earlier. So uh, once again, just to finalize this talk, what I uh, want to highlight some key points that uh, some aspects like uh, Preliminary data processing is really emphasized in machine learning, and I find it uh, lamentable because, uh, for say, my work is crucial, and I cannot really find anything uh, about that in the literature. And uh, what we do currently, we solve it manually by analyzing, analyzing the uh, situations and then trying to pair them with actions ourselves, but how to do it in a general case, I don't know, and if you have any ideas, Thank you very much. So, yeah, any questions, please? So, uh, yeah, yeah. when well, you're thinking, uh, I have a question. So, the situation when the uh, human player doesn't need to do anything most of the time, 
Well, the yeah. flies there and then flies back. Yeah. Uh, it's unique to tennis. So the general questions, I, the question I guess is, uh, can we transfer the same algorithm, the same idea to other types of games? Well, a, a, again, it depends on the game. For example, in uh, there is an influential paper uh, playing Atari with deep learning. Yeah. Yes, by by Google Minus. Yes, yes. So what they do actually is because they play uh, reflective games like Alien Invaders, they simply act, let's say, on a constant rate every, say, five times yes. a second. Yeah. That's so what that's exactly what they do. Yeah. yeah, that's the simplest way. But uh, if you think of any game that has any any trace of strategy, let's say Warcraft, you cannot just say, okay, no, I'm going to the left. No, 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 no. In one second, I change my mind. I go to the right. No, no, no. I can go again to the left. So it really the case when once you uh, decide some strategy, you have to stick to that strategy until it's done. So there is always some um, preliminary analysis of uh, really uh, what's the case when the person made the decision, and then what's the end condition as when we really, yeah, kind of switch to other action. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, there's one because that's a that's a presentation about questions, not about that. <laughs> okay, thank you. So our next presenter.